Before you smash the dislike button or start writing an angry comment, this is not going to be a video arguing that Dark Souls needs an easy mode. We've all seen those videos from so-called games journalists talking about quote-unquote accessibility. Instead, in this video, I want to put those arguments to the test by seeing if my own subpar gaming skills were enough to beat Dark Souls Remastered. Because if I can beat Dark Souls, then just about anyone should be able to do the same. I'm terrible at games with melee combat, particularly ones with punishing damage outputs and short windows to heal. Hell, I struggle with The Witcher 3 unless I'm playing on the lowest difficulty, and that's not even that hard of a game. So surely I would need an easy mode to beat Dark Souls, right? But despite the game's difficulty, there are ways to make it easier without having an easy mode in the menu. Things like NPC summons, farming upgrade materials, overleveling, following online guides, and sometimes even cheesing enemies to get through the game. For this playthrough, I held nothing back. No tactics were considered off-limits. I wanted to see if I could beat Dark Souls without the need for an easy mode. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and keep watching to see if this trash gamer can get good enough to beat Dark Souls. For my class build, I chose a knight with the master key starting gift. After running away from the first boss and grabbing my gear, I slowly made my way through the asylum. For low skill players like myself, I recommend taking things slow, pulling aggro on one enemy at a time so you can fight them 1v1. An effective strategy is to hold your shield up, wait for them to attack, and then counterattack afterwards. This works for a surprisingly large amount of enemies in this game, so long as you don't run out of stamina or get overwhelmed by multiple enemies. Next, use the incredibly reliable plunging attack to take out a huge chunk of the first bot's health bar. The Asylum Demon is intimidating, but if you keep your cool, he's a pretty easy boss to fight. His attacks are slow, and he leaves huge windows for you to counterattack. I managed to defeat him on my first attempt. Now it's on to Firelink Shrine, where we meet this asshole. You'd have done better to rot to the undead asylum. Huh? Too late now. Proceed onwards to the graveyard. The skeletons provide a great challenge for new players to learn and put their knowledge to the test. Okay, let's skip the graveyard for now. After making our way through Undead Bird, we fight our first real boss, the Taurus Demon. Much like the Asylum Demon, you can take off a massive chunk of his health with a plunging attack, which is the most reliable attack in the game. I said the plunging attack is the most reliable attack in the game. Okay, I can still save this. I can still save this. Eventually, we do defeat the Taurus Demon and are greeted with this beautiful view of the sun before making our victory jog across the bridge to the next bonfire. Oh my god, I'm still alive! Run, Forest, run! The lock-on is the most reliable move in combat, allowing you to keep your camera focused solely on your enemy. Alright, let me lock onto him. Fuck! Why did it swing the camera oh. around like that? Oh, god damn it. I was trying to lock onto him! The Bell Gargoyles represent one of the biggest difficulty spikes in the early game, mainly because it quickly becomes a two versus one fight. Luckily, we can summon the Sunbro Solaire to take on the Gargoyles, and just look at the disgusting amount of damage he can do.
After ringing the first bell, be sure to say hello to the NPC with the best laugh in all of gaming. <laughs> oh, somebody rang the bell. Wait, was it you? Well, don't stop now. Only one more. But it's going to be suicide. In order to ring the second bell, we'll be going through Lower Undeadburg, The Depths, and Blight Town. The first boss along the way is the notorious Capra Demon. Funnily enough, there is an easy way to cheese this boss by chucking firebombs over the fog gate. I guess FromSoft forgot to put a roof over the boss arena. In the depths, we fight the lumbering, gaping dragon. We can summon Solaire for this boss fight, but honestly, he doesn't do much and will most likely die before you've taken off a significant chunk of health. It took me three times to beat this guy, but eventually I got it done. Blight Town is one of the most notorious areas in Dark Souls, and I really can't understand why. I mean, this place doesn't seem too difficult. Man, who built these platforms? This has to be some kind of safety violation. Quelag is a really fun boss fight. She's very aggressive and spits lava onto the floor, but summoning Maneater Mildred, a crazy bitch with two giant cleavers, helps draw the aggro off my guy. I died once during this boss fight, her AoE magic blast is no joke, but eventually took her down and rang the second bell of awakening. Before progressing with the main story, I decided to do some exploration in Darkroot Garden and fought the Moonlight Butterfly boss. This boss is annoying for melee characters since she stays out of range for most of the fight while you're stuck on this little bridge. You can summon a sorcerer called Witch Beatrice, but this bitch just stood around on the bridge with a thumb up her ass. Dude, attack! Oh my god, I can't get fired. And with that, it's on our way to everyone's favorite place, Sen's Funhouse. Oh, come on, man, that's just ignorant. Wait, I'm still alive! One good thing about Sen's Fortress is that it's filled to the brim with valuable treasure. The somewhat hidden placement of the bonfire at the top of the fort shows that Miyazaki is truly an asshole. Luckily, the boss in this area is pretty easy. Unfortunately, I forgot to kill the giant before going into the arena on my first attempt, so you can imagine how that went. After taking out the giant, I killed Iron Golem on my second attempt before getting a one-way trip to An Orlando. Come at me, bro. <laughs> this is my favorite part. <laughs> The An Orlando archers are one of the most notorious encounters in Dark Souls. Luckily, there's an easy way to cheese these guys. So there's actually a strategy where you can cheese these guys if you come right up here. Okay, pull out your sword. Run. <laughs> you just fell off the ledge, dumbass! Ornstein and Smo is probably the toughest boss fight in this game, in my opinion. Fortunately, it's possible to summon Solaire's help for this one as well. Even still, I died on my first two attempts at the boss. <laughs> at this point, it was do or die. I popped the last humanity item that I had in my inventory and reversed hollowing. Failure here would mean either fighting the boss solo or backtracking to Firelink Shrine to find a place to farm humanity. This time, I was able to take down Ornstein fairly quickly. Learning how to double roll away from Smo's Super Smash lightning attack was clutch in the second phase.
With victory achieved, all that's left is to proceed to the amazing chest ahead. O oh, chosen undead, thou hast journeyed far. Since the day Father is formed in Obscurus, I have awaited thee. I bequeath the Lord Vessel to thee. Now we can warp between select bonfires, which makes getting around the world much faster. After placing the Lord Vessel on Firelink Altar, a giant snake tells us we need to kill four Giga Chad bosses before we can face Gwyn. There are a few other bosses we'll need to tackle along the way as well. I started by opening the sealed door in Darkroot Garden and facing off against Sif the Great Wolf. He killed me very quickly on my first two attempts. Basically, you gotta stay underneath him because he will punish you at range. Now for the most important part. I farmed 30 humanity and donated them to the Chaos Covenant so I could open the shortcut to Lost Isolith. Then I killed the red-eyed Demon Scarab, or whatever it's called, saving the homie Solaire's life in the process. This shortcut also provides a nice easy path to the Bed of Chaos boss fight. Or maybe not. The Bed of Chaos is everyone's favorite boss in Dark Souls, truly the pinnacle of boss design in video games. Okay. Okay. You win that round. Oh my god, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Good job. Ah, oh, god damn it. Just run. Just run. Son of a bitch. Oh my god, he's already attacking me! Oh. Come on! <laughs> oh. oh my god, jump! Yes, I made it! Okay, heal, heal. Just go! Just go! Oh my god, I'm so close. killed me. Dude, that was the worst fight in any f video game I've ever played. I don't even feel good after that. I just got lucky, I feel like. Duke's archives was a gigantic pain in the ass. In the end, Seath was light work, though. Just smash his giant crystal, then get right up in front of him and smack him with a sword until he's dead. I made a quick detour back to An Orlando to fight Lotric and his two boyfriends, mainly because I was sick of not having a bonfire at Firelink Shrine. This fight is super annoying with a melee build. I eventually had success bum rushing the mage and then chipping away at Lotric until he's dead. Just keep the fire lit, lady. That's all I care about. Tomb of the Giants can be a real meat grinder full of skeletal gank squads and low visibility. The Sunlight Maggot helmet made things much easier though, and this ended up being one of my favorite late game areas. Gravelord Nito is a phenomenal fight, one of my favorites in the game. I died on my first attempt, so for round two, I threw on Havel's armor set and just phase tanked his ass. After Nito, I ventured into New Londo to find the homeboy Crestfallen had gone hollow. During our fight, he did his signature backflip cannonball into the water and drowned.
The ghostly gank squads of New Londo can be really annoying, but I eventually made it to Four Kings after dying twice. Four Kings themselves were no problem for me though. I killed them on the first go, thanks to my trusty Black Knight Sword. With the four lords defeated, all that was left was to face Gwyn, the Lord of Cinder. But before we get there, I wanted to briefly mention a few other interesting encounters in this game. The Painted World was a cool hidden area accessed through Anne Orlando. I didn't end up fighting crossbreed Priscilla because one, she wasn't hostile, and two, she's a badass half-dragon lady. And she's kind of hot. A few other interesting hidden areas were returning to the Undead Asylum and accessing Ash Lake via two illusory walls in a tree in Blight Town. I joined a Dragon Covenant and got a pretty sweet sword, though I wasn't strong enough to wield it. Also, that Pyromancer dude went hollow and attacked me in Blight Town. What did I ever do to you, buddy? Well, no sense in putting it off any longer. Let's go take down Gwyn. After eliminating five Black Knights, I summoned Solaire and went through the Fog Gate for the final showdown. Link the first flame? Bitch, please, I ain't no shill. All right, let me take off this fit so they can see my manly chest hair. My lord, bless thy safe return. We are here to serve your highness. Yeah, I'm king, bitch. So there you have it. Despite not being very good at these type of games, I managed to beat Dark Souls without an easy mode being added to the game. I actually feel like I got a lot better as I progressed through the game as well, and it ended up being really fun too. I think I might be in the Souls games finally. As I write this script, I've already started playing Elden Ring, though I'm only a couple of hours in at this point, but I look forward to checking out the other games in the series to see how they stack up. Before I sign off, I'd like to offer one piece of advice to people interested in playing these games for the first time. It's the culmination of everything I learned on this playthrough, and the advice is this. Get good, dumbass. Sunbathing Solaire, believe me on this one, bruv, he's a complete idiot. But he happens to be an awfully strong idiot. So just nod your head and keep him on your side. <laughs>